Hey there, comic book fans. It's Rusty again with Collector Auctions, and here I am in the car on a little road trip. I'm heading down to my hometown in West Virginia, and every time I come down, I like to stop off in Verona, Virginia, at a Dairy Queen there that makes the best Reese's Peanut Butter Cup Blizzard. But right near there is one of my favorite little antique malls that I've discovered over the last couple of years called Verona Antiques. And in the back of their store, in their mall, they have Verona Comics, and it is a ton of tables. And if you guys care, I have done episodes on this antique mall and the comics that you can find there. And the last time I stopped here, it's been several months, you can find some gems hidden in there. But you got to go digging because it's all over the place. There is a lot of stuff there, and it's not necessarily organized. But I also follow Verona Comics on Facebook, and they said they did just put out a whole bunch of new comics. And as I said, it's been several months since I've been here. So I'm going to stop in. I'm not going to spend all afternoon. I've only got probably about an hour that I can spend here. So I'm going to go in, see what I can find, do a little filming of the comics, and then I'll come back. We'll hit home. And then once I'm down in West Virginia, I will do a little show and tell for you guys. So stay tuned. Enjoy some of this footage, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, I just finished up here at Verona Antiques, and I got to meet the owner of Verona Comics that's located in the back of the antique mall there. And you got to see a little bit of footage, but to be honest with you, I didn't have a lot of time. So the footage you got is the footage that you got. So I'm going to head home now. I did pick up some pretty good books, and I will go over them and everything that happened here while I was here. So stay tuned, and I'll be back once again. Many unbearable hours later. All right, guys, as you can see, I'm in Maryland now, and I'm not down in West Virginia. Normally on these trips, when you see me stop off at these antique shops, I go down to West Virginia to my property in my hometown, and I do some filming while I'm down there, but I kind of ran out of time when I was there. So I just brought the books back to Maryland with me, and I thought that we'd do it right here in my normal studio setup. So the first book I ended up picking up was a favorite of mine. It's not a super valuable book. In fact, none of these books, except for one maybe this, the very last one is going to have any real significant value. So I'm not even going to go over the CGC values or things like this, but these are really cool books. And if you get a chance, you should pick them up and read them. This right here is Batman number 394. It is the second part of a Doug Minch, Paul Galassi story where he was facing off against the Dark Rider. I believe that's what his name was in this. It's been so long since I've read that, but I ran across both copies while I was digging through some of the boxes at the Verona Antiques. And they had both of them right there, but the first issue, 393, beautiful cover, did not have it wasn't quite as good as I would have liked. It had a very, it's a very dark cover and it had a pretty nasty color breaking spine tick. But issue 394 here was very nice and I love this. This is one of those, it's a two issue storyline that's nice and self contained. It isn't some big super villain, but is in a very exciting story. Doug Minch is a great writer and really enjoyed this and it's a high I highly recommend you guys going out and finding these two issues they're not expensive at all I also picked these up I don't know why I, I've got multiple copies at this point but I can't stop picking them up because I love these issues I wish they were worth more they certainly are worth maybe getting signed by Alex Ross someday but I picked up 
two issues of issue number one of Justice. I picked up the villains. Where is it? The villains cover right there and the heroes cover. So I picked both of those up. And again, I it's one of those things where I wish this book was worth more because I've actually picked up some pretty decent copies recently. And I've been reading this and I've been slowly putting together this 12-issue miniseries or maxi-series with Alex Ross' beautiful artwork. Just absolutely gorgeous artwork in there. And I can't. I keep picking up issues number one. I, I really can't control myself. And when it's only a couple bucks, it's not that big a deal. I did pick this up, and I, I probably wouldn't have if I thought that, if I had known that it really wasn't worth getting graded. But I picked up Def Rattle number one. It's got this beautiful Mark Schultz cover right there. And the reason I picked it up is, honestly, my internet was off on my phone at the time, and I couldn't really look it up. I didn't think this was the original Death Rattle or one of the more valuable ones. I didn't think it was. But again, for a few bucks, I didn't mind picking up this issue number one. I think this is probably the third volume or second volume of it. But it also, like I said, it has a beautiful Mark Schultz cover. So it, again, for a few bucks, it's not a big deal. This right here, I picked it up for two reasons. One, it was my, I had a copy of this. It was my only copy of the Freedom Fighters I had when I was a kid. It was issue number number nine. I always remember that cover. I always thought this had this very Captain America looking red costume. And I always kind of liked that. That was kind of neat. Took me back to my childhood a little bit having this issue, but I wouldn't have picked this up if I didn't think that there was him value in it because of how high grade this book is. Now, this one has a potential 9.8. We'll see if I, about it. I will get this one into a press at some point here. 9.8s go for about $120. I didn't pick it up to really try to make a lot of money out of it, but I did pick it up out of nostalgia. And, as I said, with the high value, there's always that potential of getting it graded as well. Now, the one book, I said I was going to get down to the last couple of books here. And this one is definitely worth getting graded. Although, this price has dropped over the last couple of years as well. But, we'll see what happens if we get anything in MCU with Ghost Rider and the Midnight Suns. We've got the first appearance of the Midnight Suns in Ghost Rider number 28 here. It's still polybagged. We'll see how that is after I open it up. I've got multiple copies of this, but this is a book I've actually never sent in to CGC. There's been some other Ghost Rider books I've sent in from this series, but I never sent this book in, and we'll see how that goes after I get it out of the polybag and see if there's any kind of line or indent that I'm going to have to kind of press out, maybe use the, the steel ball to get some of that indention out. We'll see how that goes as well. But this one definitely has some has some potential. It is a 9.8 candidate. 9.8s go for about anywhere from, I've seen from in the last few months, from 80, which is very low, all the way up to about $133, $135. So this one has a potential. And so that brings us to the last book that I picked up. And this book wasn't there in... At the store, this is what the owner went back to his house to find for me. Now, what happened was I showed up. I only had about an hour, really, on this trip to stop at Verona Antiques. In fact, I wasn't even going to. But I found myself down there in Verona a little bit earlier than I expected. So I figured I'd stop in. I gave myself about an hour to go through the books. Not through everything, just kind of go through some of the books. And the owner happened to be there, and we had been we had talked before. He remembered me from about six months ago when I was in there, and I was looking for a particular book from the previous visit before that, where I had picked up this book. It was a newsstand, and I was he he had said the last time he had a whole batch of these, and just to let him know when I was going to be in. Well, my schedule was kind of unpredictable and I never did let him know but he was right there and he said hey I can run back to the house and pick up the books if you want and I said absolutely I said I'm, I'm still here I still have boxes to go through so he ran back to the house while I was going through some of his more new comic books that he had brought in 
And that's where I had found some of these, these books right here. And he comes back and with a whole box, maybe about 15 to 20 copies of this particular book. And this is a book, this is a book I picked up. I've picked up two from him over the last year. And it's just because of the backlog of all the books that I've been cleaning and pressing. It hasn't made it into the press. And trust me, the only reason I would put it in is that there are newsstands. Well, he said when he told me the last trip down, he had multiple copies of it. I said, I'd love to take a look at them. Well, he went and got them for me. And let me show you what I ended up picking up. It is Batman Adventures number seven. Obviously not a key. We're a couple issues before the Harley Quinn appearance and everything. And as a, if this was a direct, direct for this is basically 28 bucks. I mean, it is case cost to get this book graded. But as a newsstand, when I picked these up a while back, there were a couple of listings online on eBay. Not that a listing is what the book is actually going to sell for, but they literally had newsstand 9.8s of this listed for over $300. And I'm going, well, I can play this game a little bit. It won't cost me much to see if some of these books will do pretty good. And I said, I picked up two of these previously. They're in the shop. They're in the boxes to eventually get graded. But again, I said something to the owner and he said he'd bring me back the whole batch. So that's what he did. He ran to his house, came back with a box, and I ended up picking up not just one, but I picked up five copies of newsstands of this book. Now, obviously, this is something that if I get these graded, I'm not going to just sit there and drop them all on the internet or anything like that, but it will be kind of curious to see if I can get any of these to grade out as a 9.8 and see what the value really is. The Sometimes the only way to find out is to put that product out there on the market and let's see what really if it want if there's any demand for it at all to begin with and i thought it was kind of curious it's kind of fun and it's not a big investment on my part i don't think i paid more than four or five bucks for each of these in fact i know i paid four bucks because he charged me twenty dollars for the five of them so to me that's a bargain as long as i can go ahead and get them graded and see how they do but here let me leave this up here but guys, that is everything I picked up from Verona Antiques. And of course, the comics section in there is called Verona Comics. And you can find them on Facebook. And really enjoy spending some time there. Again, this trip, I only had about an hour in my previous stop there. And I've got a video where I stopped in there. I gave myself four hours to go through all those boxes. And I found some nice minor keys in there. And that's what you can find. You're not going to find some super big books, although he does have some bigger books in the case by the checkout desk where the cashier is. In the back of the antique mall, that's where you'll find Verona Comics. And it's a lot of lesser books, and you will definitely, but you can definitely find some books in, books in there that if, especially if you put the time into clean and press, possibly get him graded, you're going to find some gems in there. And you just have to dig for them, through them and find some good things. So guys, that is it. That is everything I picked up from Verona Antiques or Verona Comics on this particular trip. If you guys are down in that area in Virginia, it's down on off of 81. It is a, probably about an hour and a half north of Roanoke, Virginia, you are sort of in that area where you're going to head out to I-64 to head out to Charlottesville. It's near Lexington, Virginia. Hopefully you guys can get a chance to stop there. If you don't stop for the Antique Mall, at least stop at the Dairy Queen and get yourself a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup Blizzard because they are excellent. I mean, I stop there on the way down on every trip I go visiting my hometown and I get one on the way back when I'm coming back to Maryland so a little bit of a glutton for uh, something I really like right there I'll tell you that but when I discovered that Verona Antiques was there just a tremendous amount of comics to go through so either way whether you stop at Verona Antiques and go through all those great comic books or if you stop at the Dairy Queen and get yourself a really good blizzard Either way, it's all good. Hopefully, you guys will get a chance to visit both places. 
Guys, I am out of here. Thank you for joining me today. Definitely hit that like, slap subscribe, and click on that notification bell if you enjoy this kind of content. And definitely leave me a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about the books I picked up today. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Have a great day. And remember, every comic has a story.